Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today on The Average Garage, you might have seen it in the back of a previous episode, but I made another on the whim purchase and I bought an ARB compressor. It's only a small one, it's the CK, CKMP12 or something. Um, he said it worked, I'm pretty sure it works, but we're gonna pull it apart and test it and see what the go is anyways. So stay tuned for that and you'll see how to rebuild your ARB compressor. All right, so as you can see, We've got the ARB compressor here. I'm gonna start by unscrewing the air filter. Tiny little bit of rust in there, not too concerned about that. The crank's just in there, as well as the piston up here. So I'm just gonna undo these two bolts here, this bolt here at the end of the tank, and slide that up. So inside here in the end cap, there's just an O-ring either side. You can pop this chamber out, but I'm not really gonna bother because I don't need to. There's some strange markings in the bore. I don't know if you can see it down in here on either side, like it's been touching. In there is a hex bit and if you undo the hex bit that actually slides out and you can pull the whole lot off so I'm just going to do that real quick and just check this lower bearing. If that's all good then I'm happy with that. So there you go, that had red Loctite on it as well. As you can see there and there's a tiny little clip on the end here that holds it on the shaft. So as you can see in this lower bearing, there's plenty of grease in it, but literally all I'm gonna do is chuck another little dab of grease in here because this bearing actually dries out over time. I'm just gonna chuck a little bit of green grease in it, put it all back together. This seal here is fine, but if you do have any nicks, cuts, or tears in it, you can buy a replacement seal from ARB. And these little valves here, that's another replaceable part. So the air is drawn in through the filter into the crank case, it goes up through these little inlet valves here. And just as the air compresses, those valves stay down and then it pushes air through the cylinder. So they're very simple design. Lost my marine grease. All right, so I found my marine grease. I'm gonna chuck some on the end of an Allen key. Only need a tiny, little, tiny, tiny bit. Just gonna spin that around a bit. Now these needle bearings are in a cage, so they shouldn't come out. That's all it needs. Got some fresh red Loctite. Now it only needs a little bit. That's probably too much. So line the thread up. Once the thread's lined up, you can push that down into place and then do it up. Now, I'm gonna do this up the rattle gun, or well, not the rattle gun, the impact driver, purely for the fact that the piston's trying to turn up. That should be plenty. So 
So now we can chuck it all back together, make sure all the seals are sealing up properly, and then we're good. I might just put a very, very thin smear of grease, or actually probably oil, just on the inside of this bore here, um, just to give it a tiny bit of lubrication for the piston. Now these don't have to be super tight, they just need to be nipped up really. Right, so just in here is the air filter. So there should be a stone filter in here. And there's not, so somebody's lost it at some point. So I'm gonna to have to get the stone filter that sits in here. There's no point running this thing in any sort of dusty or sandy conditions, because um, it'll just destroy itself. So I'm gonna order another filter for that. But for now, let's get started on mounting this into the box that I have for it. All right, so I've got this box that I used to have as an old electrical box, as you can see. Now, it is filthy inside, I will clean it out. But for now, I was focused on using the mount, so, and the bolt. Um, this is just the mount that came with the compressor. It's what they already come with, and then you can get mounts to bolt straight up to your car. But I kind of want mine to be portable. I was thinking about hard mounting in the car, but at this point in time, before my dual battery and other stuff, it's a bit too difficult, so I wouldn't mind it as just a portable unit. So I've got this box. I will need to buy an air hose for it as well as order the filter. So for those who have never seen a rivnut tool before, these things are a great bit of kit. You choose the right size puller for the job. So you screw your rivnut on, you unscrew it, say half a turn, put it through where you want it. So in this case for me, it's about here. such and then just like a pop rivet gun you squeeze it see it shrinks down a bit and there you have it you captured thread Now the reason I've done this is so that I don't have nuts and bolts hanging out the back of here. It'll only be a small bolt head and a washer, and that's it. All right, so these screws here, they're a bit too long. I'm just gonna chop maybe five mil off them and then I can mount that into the box. All right, so that's mounted in there. I'm gonna get a 90 degree elbow for this finger tight fitting here. I'm gonna get a 90 degree fitting, run that out, and then there'll be a hose coiled up in here. So this is all the wiring we've got for it, um, which is your fuse block, where your power comes from, 
which I'm going to put some alligator clips on it. And you got your switch and your relay. I really don't like when people do this and they leave you absolutely no room to do anything. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so as you can see behind me, so just here, it's all in a box. Um, you got your compressor, switch, and the relay is just down in there. It's all neatly tucked away and conduit. The extension leads are in there. All I need to do now is get the air filter and get the hose sorted out, which I have to order in, um, so I can pick them up next week. So that's it, that's done for now. So thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you all in the next video.